had a, I don't know where you uh, studied much about the Bible, about the disciples, but Paul was a minister of the gospel, but he never did pastor no more. He was a traveling evangelist. And now he had started churches. There you go, Steve. He started churches. And uh, you know, Stephen, they ain't a lot of people ain't like Paul. I know some starting to quit, ain't you? <laughs> Amen. I think people start church and then quit. Amen. Now, this church here, if you want to know a little history about it, it started as a church, and uh, they uh, didn't do nothing about building it because uh, uh, Caldwell County told them there's enough churches in this community. Well, they made one decision, it worked. Wiley Sanders walked into the city warehouse in Morgan and said, I'm hunting preacher Michael. And I said, here I am. He said, Brother, where are you preaching now? I said, I'm not preaching pastor no work. I'm still preaching. He said, we need a pastor. And I come here in the 70s and had a trailer back here. Now I know where the lines is in this place more clearly. Being where you dug that hole out out there for the safety tank you was out there, it's down below where you was at. And the lid is down on there, because it's not there. Sixty feet from that <coughs> lid, John way the line. Measure sixty feet from that lid to the other side. Place it over. Why the lid is the line. But I come over here and I got pictures of the church. I got pictures of this church. Anybody that like to put a little interest in building up a history on this church and all? I got a whole lot of pictures and a whole lot of history on if you want to make a book. Nice and be nice to do it because we need one and then maybe we can make a little one for everybody to have. But anyhow, when I come back there as pastor, my kids, Donna and Wanda and Tim, I got the pictures. Did I show them to you one time, Lance, sitting on Santa Claus's lap, you remember, at the piano in yonder on that little baby grand. And uh, I asked Wiley, it's your bottom of this church was put in dug out and washed up. I said, how come, uh, what did you start? He said, we're going to build a church there. And, and Lenore said, we can't. I said, they don't own it. Dig the footings out tomorrow for the footings. And I'll have the block of fence from Mary down here. And it belongs to God. We'll build it. Amen? God's got to have somebody to help. Amen. And Sister Rudy, when we got the port and the blocks laid for the basement, Men and Wiley come over here and put the top on it. And that's all the furs we got because we didn't have all that much money. And I stayed here a year after that and left. And then I got a phone call one day. We need you back over here. <laughs> and I said, well, I ain't never went back to the same place twice. He said, you don't have to. The top's on it now. And this was built. First time I'd ever been in this part when I came back the second time. And I said that to say this. If you're going to stand for God, you can't be a coward. Over at the courthouse in Lenore, the big attorney stood up and said he was the attorney for Colwell County. I said, I'm the attorney for God Almighty, and I come in the name of the Lord. And now we're going to build that church, and I forbid you to go down there. Well, they come down, pour the waters out, you remember, and all that. And we didn't have a little work for that. I don't want to go into all that. But what I'm saying is, their bucket had a hole in it. Amen. God hammered it shut. Now they won't come down here. The, a man told me here a while back, he said, they heard you still back down there. They don't want to mess the fooling around with you. Put the paper, a fireball, Harry Mike was out of Burke County, upset the Caldwell County. Amen. What does the Bible say? Come on, Bible readers. What did they say in that one city over there? And they went through the city uh, upsetting the town. Am I right, Tim Smith? Amen. So you know what? You ain't done nothing for God until you upset the devil. Uh, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God, I'm glad. Well, Brother Doug sitting there, his boy wanted to put a trailer, a bigger trailer where Doug lived. And Doug asked me to go with him over the same part of the committee that sat there and I went in. And they passed it right quick, didn't they, Doug? Amen. You want me to tell you something? God don't need no little chicken little. 
He needs some grown up roosters. And hen. Come on, amen. amen. If you ain't going to say amen, say amen. amen. Because over in the second chapter of Colossians, I'm going to preach. Listen to what he says. Well, I would that you knew what great conflict I have for you for uh, uh, for them at Laodicea. Did I say that pretty good? And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. You know, I ain't never seen Jesus face to face. You ain't neither. I ain't never seen God face to face. But I sure seen him move in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Amen. I'm Thank not you, Jesus. Now. I might die before tomorrow night. No, I done died years ago. Let's go to sleep. Last that their hearts might be comforted being knitted together in hatred. Love. Love. Me. In love and to all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. Amen. Lance, am I right on this over there, maybe in Romans or Summers, that he says that they never come to the knowledge of the truth? And you know there's a lot of people today that's never come to the truth. Preacher, I don't, I used to go to church. I don't have to go no more. I said, uh, I'll tell you one thing. They, they ain't nobody, they won't nobody here going to run you off if you love God, but see, amen. You're going to stay where God tells you to go. Amen. amen. Come on, amen. Ain't that all? You say, well, preacher, we've had a bunch. Oh, yeah, we've had a bunch of this, that, and the other in and out and everything for 17 years I've been here. But thank God for them still coming in and out. Amen. 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 I'm not going to worry about everybody else. I pray for them and God will bless them and do what He can with them. Hope we find them a good place somewhere. But you ain't going to find a perfect church. No. Nope. Nope. If you think there's a perfect church, let me tell you what to do tonight. Go home and look in the mirror and see if you are. Come on. Amen. In whom are hid all their treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. And you know what? I told a preacher, and I ain't going to call his name. The reason I know him, and some of you know him, but I ain't calling his name. He brought his group here one night and put on a drama, and we had a great time. And he told some of my people on the porch, if you come to the, his church, it can be a better church than here. And I told him never to come back. Amen. Amen. Are you done? Amen. Let me tell you, if, you're, if people come to... Entice people with fancy words to, to steal people from your church. That ain't of God. Right. Amen. I told one the other day, I said, you know what? We'd like to have you. I don't want to overdo. Then the brothers, I don't want to. You leave your church. We'd love to have you to come. It's supposed to come. Our homecoming, him and his wife. Lives right behind Doug. And he told Doug after I left, he said, that's a man of God. He'll talk to you. I ain't got no reason, Miss Helen, not to love everybody. Yeah. I don't like somebody's ways, Tim. Ain't a lot of people's ways I don't like at all. Amen. But boy, you got to love that heart. Amen. Amen. Come on. And the Bible said, verse 5, For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. How steadfast are you in God tonight? Come on, bless you. I'm just yeah. going to preach country tonight. Now, blessed be God. Bless uh, him, uh, Lord. Said you love. Now, listen, I'm going to uh, love the Lord thy God with all his soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And you come in here or come out there or talk to somebody next week, I talk about your neighbor and the custom of going on. Thank you don't God. love God. Thank wow. God. Amen. You, you say, preacher, that old neighbor does me wrong. Well, blessed be God. If you don't like him, God don't like you. Bless God. You gotta love everybody. I don't care who Amen. you are. Right? Amen. I lived beside of Gary Taylor for, I believe we said 42 years, something like that, 42, 43 years, and we got along. Amen. Uh, he does the swimming pool. I turn on him. Take Louise and Melissa and said, "Mom, Grandma, they are out there digging, so they're gonna dig and let the devil out." <laughs>
Amen. They're my children. Amen. They're mine. As ye have therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Oh. Amen. I don't know many places I go in Morgan. Of course, I see a lot of that. When I used to go into Walmart some. I don't go in there much more. But then I've heard it said by some women that knew me at other churches said, uh, well, I said, keep going this way. Don't worry, Brother Michaels, and he'll get on to you about going to church short of the world. Guilty. I want to say this. One morning, several years ago, been married, been dead about five years, six, married to Canada, something like that. I got up, and I hadn't been to the depot cafe in Glen Apple in a long time to eat. Lord said, I want you to go over there this morning. I got something for you. Lance, I got in the truck and drove over there and pulled in park and went in. And there sat Mary on the waiting bank to wait on her sandwich. And Mary McKinnon, the rural wife, used to be a member of River Valley when I was pastor there. And I said, Mary, if you come over here and sit just a minute, I need to talk to you. And she said, well, what do people think? And I stood up and I said, hey, folks. Mary's going to sit beside him. Does it bother you? She come over and sit down. I said, Mary, where do you go to church? Now, I ain't got time for church or God. I run a bingo game on Saturday night. I run a clothing store Sunday, Monday, and all the next week. I ain't got time for God, preacher. I said, you better get ready. It ain't long till you're going to meet him. Wow. Was it three weeks? About three weeks, I'll say, and be close after that. Till they called us, and Murray had went on to meet the Lord. She got her warning. Come on, Lance, when you tell somebody about Jesus, you tell somebody about the Lord, you warn them to flee from what? The wrath of God that's going to come. Amen. 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 And I, I told Louise, I said, boy, I hate that. I, she, she told me she didn't have time for God. She didn't have time for the church no more. I'm going to tell you something. If you are a part of the church, you belong to God. You ought to take time for it. The Bible said in chapter 7, rooted, built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Are you Amen. thankful that you're... It's Amen. Hallelujah. You can ask Donna and them right there. They'll tell you, Sunday night when we talked to Billy and Alice, Billy's got cancer. He's going to have to have surgery this week. It ain't bothering Billy. He said, I don't know. My daughter, somebody, one of somebody told her about Billy Ford. She said, well, I know one thing about Billy Ford. He won't back. If he tells the truth, him and Wiley had a round about eternal security. Billy told Wiley, he said, I don't care what you say or what you do. If you ain't got eternal life, you don't have that life. Woo! Come on, amen. amen. Oh, preacher, you've gone crazy. Thank the Lord, Broughton's over the road, but they need preaching too, too. Right. Chapter, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. You know what? That's where he said over there in the New Testament. Lance, if I misquote it, you help me. Come out from among the world yes. and be you a separated people. <laughs> <Amen>. said, oh. <laughs> if you love the world more than you love God, the love of Jesus is not in you. There you go. I don't love I love the uh, living year and I thank God for letting me live in America. Amen. Uh, black fella T D Jakes, any of you know old T J <laughs> he's preaching the scene and I mean that old black boy he preached. He said, I'll tell you one thing. He said, uh, America is just like it was when God built it. He said, it's the dumb people that don't believe in it. There you go. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah. And I thought to myself, you need to go to the White House and preach. Yeah. Verse 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of Godhead bodily. Did you know what? You are a temple of God. Yes. A vessel of God. Amen. Now, I'm not criticizing and kicking nobody. I'm just telling you, I had a boy, and everybody, some people here tonight, I'll tell you, 
a boy and his wife had come here to church. They got married here. I didn't believe they got married here. And he had tattoos all over his arms and all over. And other churches wouldn't let him come in because of all them tattoos. Am I right, Brother Lane? Yes, sir. And we accepted him because it ain't what's on the outside. It's what's inside. How are you doing? But now he's got out of church I understand and back to tattooing and all this and he needs prayer. Amen. Amen. He needs prayer. But he said, and ye are completing him which is the head of the principalities and power in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hand and the putting off of the body of sin in the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. I'm going to tell you something. When a little boy is born they want you to have him circumcised. That's a fleshly circumcision. But everybody that's born again in the Spirit of God has to be circumcised of heart. The foreskin of the heart peel off. And a big sign put up our bed. Jesus said, this is my property, leave it alone. Amen. <laughs> I'm having a good time now. Even Bless also you also ye are circumcised. Verse 12. Buried with him in baptism. Wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the uh, operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Uh, I said it, I'm going to say it again. You don't have to be baptized to be saved. Water has nothing to do with being saved. But if you're able, I entice you to let us baptize you, showing the whole world and the church that you're burning the old man and coming up and doing a fresh in Christ. Did I explain that all right? And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. You know what? Boy, I'm going to tell you something that you may never read, but it's in the Bible. All the sins that you ever done, Miss Dad important, he forgave you. He put them in a sea of forgiveness. Amen. And never will be remembered again. God ain't. God ain't some uh, Indian giver give you something to take it away from you. Uh, I'm talking about salvation. Don't get you the whole stuff too now. Yeah. Amen. He, Jesus gives you the opportunity, the privilege does, to ask him. And he said, if you'll ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Amen. And when he comes in and cleanses you from all sin, the devil can hack all he wants to. They're forgiven. Amen. 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 Bible said, and you being dead in your sins. Did I read that? Mm-hmm. Number 14, blocking out the handwriting of the ordination that was against us, which was contrary to us, and taken out of the way, and nailing it to the cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect, or in the holiday, or the new moon, or on the Sabbath day. Let me tell you something. They's meat that some people don't believe they ought to eat. There's some people that can believe they can eat them. Well, don't condemn your brother because he can eat it. Come on, amen. Which are shadow things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you, for your reward is in a voluntary humility, humbly, 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 and worshiping of the angels and truth <laughs> under those things which ye have not seen vainly puffed up by the flesh mind. <laughs> uh, that lady River Valley, she was a heavy set lady. But if you didn't put her in as a Sunday school teacher or in some of the church, and then when you warned the boat in, she wouldn't want it. I told her, I said, you know what? I'm going to take a big old rod of sin on one of these days and let them have hot air out of you and, uh, and let you come to the Lord like y'all do and you'll be all right. Come on, amen. Well, there ain't nothing to be a blessing to the church of heaven teach you, little young. Amen. These other folks in these people. We have a good time over with Tim Smith there, amen, in that room. And the women do. I know they do. They didn't. Miss Bonnie jump up and down. <laughs> And not holding the head from which all the body but joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knitted together increased with the increase of God. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, ye are subject to ordinance. Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish for the use and act of the command.
commandments and doctrines of men, which things have indeed showed wisdom and will worship and thank you, and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the sanctification of the flesh. Let me tell you something. Uh, the Word of God will sanctify you holy. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all you weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I'll make you alone in heart, and you can find rest for your soul. Ain't he a wonderful God? Amen. Let's come and pray and have a wonderful week in his name. Amen.